Three, two, one. No. <laughs> Still good? No, okay. <laughs> Cooking with Debbie. Woohoo! Audrey Clary Garvey. Oh my gosh. Woo! Cooking with Debbie. Friends. She probably grows all this in her house. Audrey, you can go to your backyard and talk about marriage and parenting too. Self care and budget and <laughs> some recipes for life. Yeah. Cooking with Debbie. My friends. Hi, everybody. Hello, Audrey. Excited. I'm so excited. It's been a whole week since I talked to people. The podcast that we did on Tuesday, we had a couple little flubs, but we fixed that. So this is my first like face to face with you guys in. Well, that's quite a, why. No, no, that's... that one's that one has pomegranate on it. Oh, is this the one you were using? <laughs> I'm okay without it. Okay. I forgot one of my aprons upstairs. But the good news is this really isn't a sloppy kind of dish to make. It's going to be so easy peasy. Wait, let's go back and say hi to everybody. Go back and, and start the show. Sure. Hi. She's very excited, you guys. Welcome to Cooking with Debbie and Friends, a cook and chat show filmed right here in my kitchen with my husband, Travis. That's right. It used to be every Tuesday and Thursday, but now it's right here on Sundays at noon Pacific time. We stream to Facebook and YouTube, so if you're brand new, please comment below because we want to chat with you during the show. Yes, we stream to these channels so we can chat with you because Cooking with Debbie is all about spending time with friends and... I have to say, making new friends. People make new yeah. friends here. Yep. And uh, now, Mrs. Excited Pants, you can go through the the chats here and, and say hi well, to everyone. Well, first of all, I was saying to Audrey, because Audrey has a beautiful garden. She probably has all this stuff. You could probably just go in your backyard and pick all the ingredients, mm -hmm. Audrey. Um, hello, Tony. Hi, Dad. Um, Cindy Castillo, always a pleasure to see you. Uh, Rhea Kahnemacher, which probably means she's there with Richard. Yep. Rhea and Richard. Rhea hey Richard and Artemis. Uh, Debbie Dennison Burns. Hey, Dad. Nice to see you back here. Debbie Wheatley, you got an additional day off. This is a beautiful day to have off. Nice. Um, Robert Bye. Snow. Excuse hey, me. Robert, your alarm worked. You're here. <laughs> oh, Audrey said the frost killed most of what was left, but I saw your haul look pretty good. Peggy Castaneda, our local Avon lady, is here. Um, and Debbie says she loves Sundays at noon. Good. Oh, I'm so glad. Hello from the Florida boys. That's uh, Fabian and Scott. Yep. And we have some news about them at the end of the show. We'll be talking about that. Hey, Mike and Linda. So happy to hey, see Mike. you here. Linda. Um, welcome to noon on Sunday. Hey, Diana Eagleson. Diana. She's watching on the road. Diana. These pomegranate seeds are from the pomegranates you left me on my porch. And they are mwah, delicious. So you'll be seeing your pomegranate seeds on this salad. Yeah. Hello from Joe and Beachy and Jorge. Jorge's joining. Hey, Jorge. hey nice to see I'm all of you Beachy. guys. So, so excited, so excited to be with you today. We're going to get started pretty quick because we can talk throughout all of this. Um, let me just start by saying, Trav, can you get a close up on the flowers? Because they are just unbelievable this no. week. No, we can't no, pull them I can, over. But I can post photos. We're going to post photos of the flowers that we got from Thotties. Um, and the person who does our flowers is Jasper. And Jasper is amazing mm -hmm. with her flower arrangements. If you haven't uh, already gotten your arrangement for Thanksgiving or you just want to say, you know, I love you to yourself, which is so important, go order flowers from Fadi's. They are um, socially distanced. There's a way to order your flowers and pick them up with hardly any contact at all. So please, please uh, support our local business. And they deliver. So if you don't live near Azusa, that's okay. She will deliver. Um, and they are really amazing people on amazing top of people. being really good at what yeah. they do in business. So what we're doing today... <laughs> no, hang on. That, you know what's so funny? That needs to come out of there. I, okay. Let, let, me, let me step in here. Okay. We're going to move that. All right. I set it all up the way I want it to flow, and then he comes and he interrupts my flow. Well, because, because it needs to be set up a certain Okay, level. then you're going to be doing some stuff. Let's so see. today we're making a fall salad for Thanksgiving. Um, I have diabetes type 2 and Thanksgiving can be a pretty dangerous meal regarding carbs. So what I've done is I'm making sure that on our table this year there will be things that I can enjoy and that I can eat. Not a big dessert eater, which is great. 
that means I can have some of the salad after dinner too as my dessert. And it is just beautiful. For my friends who are vegetarian, this is a vegetarian meal uh, salad. Um, that looks like cantaloupe. I know. It could be, and, and for those of you who are vegan, all you have to do is leave out the caramelized nuts and the cheese, and you've got yourself a beautiful vegan salad. So, um, without further ado, let's let's get going on this. You want to show the people on sure. the camera? Just what so I have up. here, can I get a spatula? What I have sure. here is butternut squash. I'm not a hero. I'm not going to peel a butternut squash. Uh-uh. No time. way. Yes. Yeah. No way, no how am I going to peel a butternut squash. You can find this year-round most places. Um, you can find this year-round most places already cut up. Also, what I did this week is I treated myself to onions and celery that were already cut. And you'd be surprised how you can just zhuzh up a meal when you don't have to cut an onion yourself. So uh, anyway, so I've got the butternut squash. I did take a knife to it and make it a little less... Um, a little smaller. What I have here is two tablespoons of pure maple syrup. This isn't the pancake syrup. Um, this is maple syrup. You'll still find it in the same aisle. Yeah, that pancake syrup, by the way, is, is usually imitation. Yeah. This is the real stuff, huh? This is the real stuff. You okay. pay a little bit more, but it has a long shelf life. And once you have it in your cupboard, you'll probably be using it more. In fact, I talked to Travis over coffee today saying, I want to do a show about how to caramelize onions and how to candy nuts. And and how to take the seeds out of a pomegranate. How to take the seeds out of a pomegranate. Without getting because, it under your fingernails. Because once you have all those things in your fridge, you can just zhuzh up a salad. Spell zhuzh. Um, why are the nuts not vegan? Because, uh, Rhea, I made them with butter. So, it, it and the recipe is so easy, I'm embarrassed to tell you. It is butter and... Um, cinnamon. Cinnamon, a little bit of cayenne, and brown sugar. So, I don't know what vegans would use instead of butter. It's like a vegan butter there. Yeah, if there's a vegan butter, Rhea, yeah. can you please put that on the comments? Hi, Paula. And Hi, Monica. Monica. Are you watching over with my mom? So I've got this butternut squash, and I put in the maple syrup. Now I'm going to put in two teaspoons of a good olive oil. There you go. And this is usually something that I would not eat. <laughs> and uh, he may not. I don't know. But, but the maple syrup, you okay, we're moving in the right direction here. <laughs> what I have here is I have... I have a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon, a quarter teaspoon of salt, and one eighth of a teaspoon of pepper. Um, it's right before Thanksgiving. I encourage all of you, I know we're all cooking at home anyway, but I would encourage you now to make sure your stove and your oven are calibrated and ready to go, that your refrigerator filter is fresh and ready to go, and your teaspoons and your um, uh, measuring cups are all ready because that's something you don't want to be looking for at the last minute. Yeah, because most of the time uh, I, I buy her a new set just about every year, but they always end up in the garbage disposal and then you know, you can't use those because they're sharp or it, it, it'll file off the, the measurement. And we've got some stainless steel pans through Amazon and they sent us um, I wondered why it was free um, a free set of uh, measuring cups and there's one that doesn't measure anything right there's not even a measurement on it there's it's not a quarter cup it's not a third cup it's just this cup that wound up going into the dog kibble and that's where it lives all right so I put in the um, the um, cinnamon the spices. salt pepper maple syrup pure maple syrup and a good olive oil I'm gonna spray this with Pam not her sister why because um, the other store brands, they don't seem to work for me. So when okay. I grab Pam for baking or cooking, I know it's going to work. Is there a difference, much of a difference in cost? Um, you can find Pam on sale, but here's the thing. Why ruin a whole dish because That's what you I'm went saying. for the it, cheaper brand? If it's brand. not that much more, yeah. you may as well go with the one you know will work. Um, Anna Maria said, and Diana said, vegans would use coconut oil. Ooh. To caramelize Sounds the nuts. And mm -hmm. Rhea says, I love Earth Balance as a butter substitute, especially for cooking with. Good to know. Earth Balance. And I think you can get that at any store. It used to be just a Trader Joe's kind of thing. The oven is, um, Travis, you're so adorable. I may not eat this, LOL. I, I, use, I will try it. Thank you, Fabian, for, uh, for clarifying the spelling of zhuzh. Now, I'll try it because I'm always open to try new things. But as soon as she hit it with the cinnamon, now I'm on board. Um, and if you're talking about making stuff with coconut oil, 
I'm I'm on board with that too because it sounds amazing. Popcorn with co so, coconut oil. So Fabian, right. let me go back to the zhuzh, just so that you know, because Debbie says it a lot. It is spelled Z H U Z H to fix up Thank in Yiddish. Thank you. Thank you. And um, um, I know I did. Love Pam. I do too. Yep. It even comes in sticks, which can be measured. Cool. So Travis is going to put this in a preheated oven, screaming hot, 400 degrees. Um, um, so that's going to bake for about 15, 20 minutes. Okay. But we have a lot more to talk about before then. We've got, right. we've got Pilar. Nope. That doesn't come this way. <laughs> a little bitch. Well, he doesn't listen to the notes. You know, the notes are right there on our screen. Oh, holy shit. Look at that. Move or I'm going to smell this. <sighs> oh, he stepped on his foot. Are you okay? You stepped full, full force. Yeah, because I wear high heels in oh here my to reach God. my counter. That's yeah. like, you okay? Yep. Are you all right? Are you sure? No, well, that's those are heels. Yeah. And that heel went right on my toe. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, can I get a little spatula? They might be in the drawer. Uh, no, smaller? Yes. Okay. We have a set in here. So, I'm going to make the dressing now. You don't have to make the dressing for this salad. The salad is going to be so easy and beautiful. If you have a pomegranate vinaigrette or a raspberry vinaigrette or you want to just do like my friend Diana Eagleson who does amazing things with just olive oil, uh, flavored vinegar, and she takes off and just is so creative. I'm going to make the dressing here, but you don't have to. Any kind of light vinaigrette is going to be beautiful on this salad. <laughs> Debbie says, I love you too so much. You have nine more, Travis. <laughs> yeah. Well, Poor Travis's toe. <laughs> not technically because they're stuck together. But, you know, so um, I keep on hand a lot of olive oil and different kinds of vinegars. And I always, um, I know the page to turn to on salt, fat, acid, heat because she has a lot of really cool dressings in there like oh you're gonna serve um, a salad with fruit here's the dressing you want you're gonna serve a salad with chicken here's the dressing a summer salad a winter salad and if you have those vinegars and oils ready to go you can make up your own salad so all right cooking in heels you go girl I'm telling you so in this I've got one half cup of pomegranate juice I'm gonna put it right into my mason Did jar you squeeze that out of those seeds no this is pomegranate juice you want to go grab oh, that no I was gonna say man you are good you can grab that because Diana Eagleson gave me a note on pomegranate this one too no and she gave me a note on pomegranate and Diana can you just put in the comments if I'm saying this right you have to be careful with your pomegranate intake if you have high blood pressure I don't know why I was just going to say why. I don't know why, but you do have to be careful. Otherwise, this is a really good juice to drink. Show the label to the people. Wonderful. It's just regular pomegranate juice. That's 100% juice? Yeah. What about the sugar in it? Um, you can stuff. read that. Okay. Can I, though? Speaking of sugar, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put in two tablespoons of white sugar. If you want to use monk fruit sugar you can do that too and the monk fruit per the monk fruit um measurement is one to one one tablespoon of sugar equals one tablespoon of monk fruit so uh, i've got my sugar in there then i'm going to put in one third cup of good olive oil there you go i've got one fourth cup of apple cider vinegar there you go into this i'm going to add one tablespoon of dijon mustard Put that in there. And then I've got my seasonings. My seasonings are one fourth uh, teaspoon of salt, pepper, okay. garlic. I'm sorry, yeah, one fourth teaspoon of salt, pepper, garlic powder, and I just kissed it with ginger. Just kissed it with some ground ginger. Ground ginger is another thing to keep in your cupboard, you know, because it really does zhuzh up your meal. Now we're going to shake. Oh, I asked you for this and I didn't even use it. Yeah. So, by the way, this has 34 um, grams of sugar per 8 ounce. So I, you might need to be careful with this if you're diabetic. Oh, I, yeah. Oh, I'm very careful with juice. For sure. When, uh, 
with diabetes. But you have to realize this is a salad that's going to feed probably six people. So the dressing is not going to be me just drinking a whole half a cup of... <laughs> drinking the salad dressing. <laughs> no? So I love Dijon mustard too. In fact, we got to put that on our grocery list because yeah. I used the last of it. Okay. So... Everything can go right into a nice mason jar. Show the people the finished product. The mason jar right there. We're going to give it a good shake it, shake it, shake it. There you go. That looks like something you would uh, get in a restaurant. Yes, and this dressing will stay in your um, refrigerator, tightly sealed for about five days. So uh, start doing what you can for Thanksgiving. Um, and speaking of, it smells really good. You want to get a little try? Yeah, let's try it. Hi, Eva. Uh, also Hi, in, Eva. in the kitchen here, Tom Salazar. Good Hi, to see Tom. You. And uh, Robert Snow says, I like how Travis is acting like he isn't also wearing heels. Don't worry about what I do in my free time. <laughs> We're doing okay, Eva. We're well, excited. Well, that's sweet. Yeah, and that's really good. Yeah. So that can go live in the refrigerator. It's got a little, <coughs> that Dijon hit me. Give it shaky, shaky. Yeah, who cares? Give it a little shaky, shaky. Can you make it sweeter? Of course, you can add a little more sugar. Can you make it a little less acidic? Sure. Come down on your um, juice and your apple cider vinegar. There's a lot of ways that you can fix this dressing up to your taste. Um, so do so. In fact, this whole salad is a suggestion of what you can do. So, hey Thaddeus, how are you doing? This um, is Thaddeus. Um, Thaddeus is over in, I always ask him. New Jersey. Oh, New Jersey, you remember. If I'm not mistaken. So, um, so we, um, uh, have our butternut squash roasting in the oven at a hot, hot temperature. Um, also, I know you don't like butternut squash. I know you're going to give it a try. Caramelized things are always a little different once you yeah. caramelize or roast something. For sure. Because that natural sugar will also kick in. Um, but this is the kind of salad that when you make it all together, you're going to see you can leave some things out on your plate or say, uh, you know, I tried it. I'm done. So this is, we're done with this. So. Now bring over the other one. Um, sure. No. Let's talk about our podcast and the cocktail for today. You know what I want to ask first? Were you upstairs singing all the single ladies? I was. Why? Okay. Just wondering. Is it you. stuck in your head? No, I just wonder if there's something I should know about. Why? Because you were up there singing sweet single ladies. All the single ladies? Okay. I don't know. Sometimes I sing to Luna. She All says that after we get into arguments. I do not. Go ahead. I thought it was in your mind. What? I thought like, you know, like when a song oh, gets like in your mind. Oh, like it was stuck in my head. Yeah, like... Okay. Baby shark doo -doo. No, don't oh, do that. Why would okay. you do that to all... Midnight at the Oasis. That's That's another worse. one, yeah. That's really worse. Okay. We're getting crazy. Okay, Diana said... Uh, pomegranate juice and high blood pressure medication may lower your blood pressure too much. Got it. So Good pomegranate enough. juice can lower your blood pressure. That's we'll have to look it up. Yeah. So the next time you start singing all the single ladies, I'll lower my blood pressure by drinking some pomegranate juice. What is wrong with is you today? I don't know. You want to taste it? I need more coffee. Give it a little taste. Which one? The pomegranate juice. It's right there. Yeah, give I'll it a taste. I'll get it. I'm drinking coffee first. But let's, okay. Let's talk about the... Uh, Let's talk about the podcast. The podcast. We're so excited about the podcast. We are stepping into the kitchen on Sunday so more of our friends and family can join because we realize that starting at 7 here can mean that some people on this coast are just getting home from work or closing up their computer or, um, you know, it's crunch it's time. A, yeah, it's a, a tough time of night during the week for some people. And we were doing it twice mm -hmm. in the middle of the week. But more importantly than that, we've been talking about um, highlighting and showcasing Debbie's strengths, which is interviewing and hosting a show. And this format is great for that, but we really haven't had too many guests in like we want to. So the podcast and that format is an opportunity to really start bringing people in and start that conversation. Mm -hmm. Like Debbie said earlier, this show is about connecting with friends. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so that's why we said, well, let's do a podcast, set it up. If you were on the show on Tuesday, you saw what it was. We're sitting at the kitchen table over there. So you see this kitchen, 
But it really is just us with mics, and we're going to be talking with some amazing people. And mm -hmm. Debbie's already reached out to a couple. I have. I reached out to two of our favorite couples, um, two of which are on here right now, uh, Fabian and Scott Hale Gomez. And they are a married couple who left Las Vegas and bought a house in Florida <laughs> right before all this happened. And... Um, we're going to be talking to them about how they will be changing up their Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And we're also going to be talking to another favorite couple, Suzanne and Jack Denlinger, and they're in Texas. And we will be talking to them about the same thing. How are you changing up your Thanksgiving? Mm -hmm. What is your Thanksgiving going to look like? And so we're reaching out to friends. I have a couple celebrity friends. Of course, we're going to bring the celebrity friends in because... <laughs> You know, they're, they're interesting people, they're fun, they're funny to be with, but we also want to make sure to bring a nice mix of, of just regular people like us, because we're like just us. living life like, like the rest of you, and, and you know, we, we want to be able to, to talk about real stuff, and yeah. sometimes, you know, Martin Scorsese, when he comes on, um, <laughs> you know, he, well, he's so, not going to get it the way you guys get well, it. Well, like, one of my best friends is Brad Garrett. And uh, those of you know him as, you know, from TV, but I know him as a friend and I know him as somebody who's trying to change his diet and add more plant-based foods. And so he's slowly becoming vegan. So I thought that would be an interesting thing to well, talk about. Well, and his, uh, his wife, Izzy, is an amazing cook amazing. and baker and blogger. and blogger and the photography she posts is really beautiful. And it's all vegan food. Yeah. And I uh, texted her that I heard something about bean liquid. When you drain your can of beans, save that liquid. It's like gold. And I wrote to her about it and she says she makes marshmallow fluff with... With bean? With garbanzo bean liquid. Oh, well. Vegans do some crazy stuff. They do some never, nutty stuff. You'd never think about. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, uh, Marty. I love Marty. Who's Marty? Scorsese. Oh. <laughs> I met him, actually, when I won my Peabody Award. It was kind of exciting. Yeah. Um, so, uh, anyway. So, Pilar has an... Um, a wonderful cocktail that we're going to throw to you. We'll talk mm. a little bit more about our podcast and build our salad when we get back. So, Pilar, oh God, you guys, are this, you ready for this drink, Pilar? It, this drink is so good. She made it, and you guys are going to make this because it is amazing. We'll kick it over to you, Pilar. skiddly doo dee doo da ba dee da dee Pouring with Pilar. She's a barista. Hi everyone, welcome back to Pouring with Pilar. She's a barista. Who gave her a bell? I did. <laughs> I love it. I'm gonna, let me know if you guys want it throughout the rest of the show uh, or from here on out or if that totally blew out your eardrums. Either way, I love it. So, welcome. Hi, welcome to Pouring with Pilar. If you're new, I'm Pilar. This is my bar. And over here we express ourselves in the kitchen by making drinks. And today it is our Thanksgiving episode and I love it. I love turkey. I love stuffing. I love cranberry sauce. And I love all of the fun, you know, apple cidery drinks that come with it. So that's what we're going to be doing today. <laughs> Did I give you the giggles? Yeah, <laughs> it's okay. So, um, Today we're going to be making a caramel apple cider and we're going to be making two different versions of it. We're going to be making one that you can just, you know, drink throughout your dinner. It's a little bit lighter. It's not as rich. And then we're going to be adding, uh, for this one, we're going to be making a sparkling caramel apple cider float with some good old fashioned vanilla bean ice cream. So this one is more for like the grown up table, which I hope I can sit at this year. I mean, it's only three of us because of Miss Rona, so they can't say no this year. <laughs> so <laughs> let's get started with <laughs> making our drink. So like I said, I have the vanilla bean ice cream. I also have the caramel apple cider or the apple cider, but the caramel comes in a sauce. Today I'm going to be using the Ghirardelli caramel sauce. This one is great because as you can see, it has a little ice cream dude, it has a little latte dude. So it's perfect for topping off your desserts. It's also perfect for your coffees, your milkshakes. If you like caramel, this is a pretty good investment. You're worth it. Invest in the caramel sauce. <laughs> so we're going to be making both of these at the same time. I'll be adding my ice cream first and then I will be garnishing it. 
So this one, how many scoops do you guys want in your float? One, two, two. two. Is that good? I don't scoop it like mom. Hers looks like you went to an ice cream shop. Yeah, More. More? <laughs> okay. Is that good enough? Good. Yeah. All right. I wanted to lick the spoon so bad. Okay. So I'm going to push this down and then I'm going to line my cup. I don't know if you guys remember, but I've showed you this technique before. It's a very easy way and a very mess free way to line some of your cups. So you're going to take your cup. She's a little messy. All right. You're going to take your cup and your caramel sauce, put her against your tummy and then just start rotating your fingers with the caramel sauce. I'm gonna do quite a bit because I'm cutting down on the flavor later. How's that look? Delicious? I didn't say delish this time. Ah, ha, ha. Somewhere Rachel Ray just went, that's my catchphrase. All right, <laughs> Rachel Ray, I'm sorry, don't sue me. And then a little bit on this one for the regular caramel apple cider. All righty, now, I'm going to be adding a caramel apple syrup. <laughs> uh, if you're a fan of pouring with Pilar, you've probably seen me do this technique before. I've done it with honey, and today I'm gonna to be doing it with my caramel sauce. It is a way to emulsify really, really thick sauces into a syrup. I don't know if you guys know the difference, but we had to be trained in knowing the difference between a sauce and a syrup. Sauces are more for garnishing. Syrups need to be lighter and thinner so that they can meld with your drink, not be all chunky at the bottom. So the ratio is one to two. You're gonna be doing two parts, like I said, honey, or in this case, caramel sauce, to one part of hot or even boiled water. And that's how you can get this consistency. So today I'm gonna be adding about a tablespoon in each cup. Ooh, that is a lot. So I'm gonna be pouring her over here. When we first tried this, we didn't have a cup this like shallow. So it's gonna be fun to drink once you get to the end. It's just woo. Alrighty, and now I'm gonna be adding my apple cider. Ooh, look at that. I like how I turn into a child whenever things start to like bubble or fizz. Look at, look at, look at, look at. Can you guys hear that? ASMR. <laughs> but that looks really fun. I'm gonna be adding a couple ice cubes to this glass before I add in my cider. Oh my gosh, they're so slippery. That's good. When I... <laughs> When I was little, my dad taught me how to use Adobe Illustrator, which is, I don't even know how to explain it, but I was basically making art online and I was, how old was I? Like you started you at like three. Three, and the first thing I ever made <laughs> was a martini glass at three years old. <laughs> it was pouring with Pilar. Uh, it was the easiest, it's a triangle, rectangle, and then the olive. Of course I had to have the olive because even at three, I was bougie. But there you are. Now let's add some extra little garnishes. I have over here some cinnamon sticks, so I'm just gonna be dropping one in there. And if you like this drink and you want to keep refilling your glass, especially if it's a short cup and it's not it's non-alcoholic, uh, leave your cinnamon stick in there. That uh, that cinnamon stick is going to keep releasing its flavor as you pour more drinks into it and it's only gonna get better the more you drink it. Now I'm gonna add a couple of apple slices just to garnish it. They're floating to the top. It is so cute. And there you have it, your perfect drink for Thanksgiving. Let me show you guys over here. Now the caramel went to the bottom, so be sure to stir that up if you're gonna be making this drink. And then here's your caramel apple cider float. It went a hell of a lot better than that Halloween float. <laughs> Look at that. Isn't that fun? You enjoy it? You like it? Is it pretty? <laughs> All right, let's give it a taste test. So I'm gonna start with this one. And I was a little worried about this because I, um, I wasn't sure how the caramel sauce was going to mix with the sparkling apple cider. And to my surprise, it was really, really yummy. They complemented each other really well. 
like <laughs> my dad, uh, Travis tried it. Travis loved it. So Travis put that stamp of approval on there. So let's give the float a shot. <clears throat> Come here, dad. He, he took his, no hesitation. He ran over here. Don't take the bell. Thoughts? Are you going to take that back? Did your mom try it? Can we try it? She's diabetic. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> You're almost done with it. Do you, what does it taste like? Um, that, well, that tastes like a dessert drink. You can definitely taste the apple cider. Ooh! Um, you definitely t get that, keep... that caramel. It yeah, really that's, is. That's really... The apples and the cinnamon sticks, not necessary. I wanted to keep these ingredients to a minimum, but garnishing, have as much fun as you want with garnishing it. It's just beautiful, that is. I matched my drink today. Bold of you to assume I didn't do that on purpose. Mm. You know what that tastes like? What? This tastes like... You say crap, I'm going to cry. You know what that tastes like? That. Garbage. <laughs> This tastes like a, an apple, like an apple pie, a cinnamon apple pie with some caramel drizzled on top. Mm -hmm. It's got the sparkle from the cider. This is... You can also add loose, like ground mm -hmm. cinnamon in there. Oh, it's ice. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> ah, salud. You're not going to take it? Oh. Yeah, d does it... Does it grant me permission of sitting at the adult table? Sure, okay. <laughs> yes. We're going to get a close-up of this one again because it's, so pretty. it's just beautiful. And the lighting at the other camera isn't good enough. Look how much is already gone. Let me add. Side. I know. <laughs> I know I said that you could have the rest of this, but I don't think there's going to be enough left. Okay. So... Well, there you have it. Those are two drinks that you can make uh, for your Thanksgiving dinner. Um, we did it, guys. I secured my seat at the adult table for the first time in 22 years. We did it. It's all thanks to you guys. So <laughs> I hope you guys have a happy Thanksgiving, a very safe Thanksgiving. If you try this, as always, let me know. Tag me. And I hope you guys stay safe. I love you. Bye. skiddly doo dee doo da ba dee da dee Pouring with Pilar. She's a barista. Wow. And let me tell you something, guys. That drink, both of them, so, so good. Um, the dessert the dessert drink, obviously, drink that after you have your turkey. <laughs> but the other one, I would say even, even have that at the table for everyone, and they will thank you. You guys, ev everyone will love those drinks. Yeah. They're just very, very... Tasty. Tasty, and they just kind of remind you Festive. of Thanksgiving. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, it, it, yeah. it tastes like an apple pie in drink form. Just the cinnamon, the um, the the caramel, the, oh, the apple cider. I love that apple cider, too. Yeah. So good job, Pilar. Yay, you did a great job. Yay, Pilar. Um, um, now I'm going to go ahead and build, start building this salad. Uh, I caramelized my nuts. And the way I did that was, now first of all, Deb, can you use walnuts? Absolutely. Deb, I don't have uh, walnuts. Can I use pecans? That's what I used. Um, any kind of uh, nut that you like on your salad, you can caramelize. Yeah. And the way you caramelize it is... But could you do almonds? Yeah. I don't see why not. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, uh, star in the making... Got it. Hey, Suzanne, we just talked about you. Were your ears burning? <laughs> Suzanne Denlinger and her husband, Jack, like I told you, will be joining us next Tuesday to talk about um, Thanksgiving and how it's going to look different at your house. Tuesday at 7 p.m. Pacific time. Yes. And uh, we, we, you know, we, we're not judging anybody. We want to hear your best ideas on how you are going to be celebrating Thanksgiving. If you are having people in your home, tell us how you're going to be careful and how you're mm -hmm. going to socially distance. And, you know, I just, Thanksgiving is such a hard meal to host in the first place. So I couldn't imagine, like, escorting everybody out in the backyard and then yeah. take off your mask at one time and then somebody serving, like, you know, in a, in a, 
I don't even know what, like a yeah. chow line. Yeah, that's basically <laughs> what it would be. So, yeah. um, so you were telling us how to um, caramelize onions and um, caramelize nuts. Yeah. So so easy. One tablespoon of butter, and uh, I believe it's a quarter cup. I will put it online uh, in the notes. Quarter cup of sugar. You can use brown sugar, but the white sugar worked better. Again, the monk fruit sugar. If you want to use that, if you're trying to watch your sugar, that's fine. As a diabetic. Um, my doctor says to in not indulge, but to learn how to portion yourself with things like real sugars. And because what happens is sometimes you go to the sweet and low and you're using all this substitute sugar for a strong sugar taste and that's not good for you either. So, um, you know, just learn how to portion your sugar. Yeah. All right. Um, and can I just say something about these? Sure. That would be perfect on that float that uh, that Pilar just made. These, the cinnamony sugar, or even just a, a little snack, just, um, you know, if you wanna pour a little handful out and, and eat a few of these, not too many, there's a lot of sugar on there, but this is a really nice little snack. Yeah, and this, I made mm. these with cinnamon because it's gonna be part of this particular fall salad. I have made these nuts for friends of mine who are vegetarian, and I asked them about the dairy, and they said yes, so they, good. They said yes, they like the dairy, um, and um, need tell big. And so, um, with that one, I put a lot of cayenne in there and just really kicked up that flavor. And that's a great gift in a jar that you can give at Christmas time. But we're going to talk all about that later. All right, so um, caramelize these nuts, and they're ready to go. And I also have here some roasted pumpkin seeds. I found them at Marshalls. I found like a five pound bag at Marshall's and I toasted them myself. And they also have a long shelf life. But once you toast up these pumpkin seeds, oh, they're great in salads on top of soups or sometimes just to eat, you know, yeah. we've been eating them just. Yep, just handfuls. Just handfuls. I also have pomegranate seeds. Oh, look at those. Are they beautiful? Oh my gosh. They used to refer to these as jewels in the Bible, and you can actually see why. These are from my good friend Diana Eagleson down the street. Thank you, Diana. This is a beautiful pomegranate, obviously grown with love. There are all kinds of ways to uh, de-seed a pomegranate. Um, you can peel it in a bowl of ice water. You can hit it with the back of a knife. Yeah, well, or um, a wooden spoon. So a you cut spoon. it in half and then you turn it over and hit the back of it so all the seeds pop out of there. Yeah. That still so, takes, it takes a long time. Yeah, that's the hardest part of this whole dish is peeling the pomegranate. Why are you wearing gloves? Because I'm going to start touching these oh, things. Oh, got it, okay. And then there's gorgonzola cheese. You can use blue cheese. Mm -hmm. If you're a blue cheese fan, use blue cheese. If you like goat cheese. You know what? This salad is like a suggestion of what you can do. A suggestion, or like my friend Jackie Cation says, that the um, Kardashians kind of use a face as a suggestion, and they go from there. Wow. <laughs> Did you really? She's but no, but that was Jackie hilarious. Cation who said it, not Debbie. Oh, that's hilarious. Let, let me let me back up here for this. Sure. Gorgonzola. 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 Cheese. Let's let's for the person who grew up with cheese whiz in their house. <laughs> okay. Let's let's talk about what this might be. This gorgonzola. You know what? If I were to explain it to you, mm -hmm. I would say this is like a blue cheese. Uh, I love blue cheese. <laughs> yeah. And if you're not really fancy, eat with your pinky up, and you don't know what blue cheese is. You're missing out. And this, wow, there's a lot of flavor in that. Mm -hmm. I love that. That yeah. tastes like a, um, like kind of like brie and blue cheese. Mm -hmm. You can find all your cheeses now for Thanksgiving. Go out and find your cheeses now. The hardest thing that you'll um, have trouble finding, and I talked to my friend Cheryl Anderson last night, the soccer mom. She's hilarious. Um, we were texting last night and realizing that big turkeys are what they're pushing on you at the store. It's gonna be hard to find a little 13 to 16 pounder. They're really pushing the big ones on you because that's what they're used to selling, turkey mm -hmm. farmers. And mm -hmm. so you'll find really good prices on big turkeys if you have a big freezer. That you can store it in. Yeah. That you can store in or you have a friend who has a big freezer that you can store it in. Now's a great time to go buy those big turkeys at 99 cents a pound. Yeah, it is. You know? Especially so, because you can do so much with it. You could throw it in sandwiches. 
have leftovers, not have it all in there for two weeks after Thanksgiving, yeah. so you're eating that. In fact, next Sunday when we come back here, we're going to do a turkey sandwich and we're going to do uh, turkey pot pies. So I will put the ingredients up. A lot of you really liked that I had put the ingredients up. Okay, let's, without further ado, build our salad. Are we ready? Yeah. All right. Ready. Now, what I like about all these add-on things here is salad, a salad for me isn't really hearty enough. I need something to really fill me up between the cheese and the, the, the caramelized nuts over there and the apple and the pear, which we have here, an apple and a pear. And... Um, just all the other stuff. Oh my God. Yeah. I had breakfast too. And this I'm is a pre-washed salad. Of course, it's a spring mix. It's triple washed. That's the investment I wanted to take for this salad. Um, because, you know, if you don't have to cut up something and wash it, even better. I realize that, you know, budget wise, it's easier to get a whole and cut it yeah, all up. But, but it's, this is really pretty. So it is beautiful. Too. Yeah. So all you do is get a spring mix. That's all it is, is a spring mix ready to go. About oh, 12 that was ounces. Like a flash on the screen. Hang About on. 12 ounces. Everybody knows what go. spring mix looks Not like. Not everybody. <laughs> Not all everybody. Right. So we're going to put our spring mix in there. And then okay. Travis cut up a Macintosh apple and a pear. Any kind of pear works. Any kind of apple works. A so Granny the, Smith. The pear. The pear is, uh, I got a Dijon, or not Dijon. By the way, I love the pear scented call? soap in the bathroom. That smells good. Why weird. am I blinking out? Help What's me, say? guys. Dijon? No, it's not a Dijon. What were you talking about? Vinaigrette? No, the pear is the a. pear? Come on, guys, help me in the comments. An Asian pear. No, not an Asian a pear. pear of, of. It starts with aces. the letter D. Starts with the letter wow. D. I, I couldn't even tell you. you guys, I'm not fancy like you, Debbie. You're the one that does all the fancy shopping. Come on, Anna Maria. Come on, Diana. Okay, they will. It'll take right. a minute. It'll take a minute. We're on a little bit of a so, delay here. We do have this uh, apple cut up and this pear cut up, and we left the skin on because you want to see those bright colors. So you already have the red in there, and you have the the uh, green from the pear. Then I'm going to put in some red onion. Bijou, anjou. Yes, that's it, anjou. Don't yell. Sorry. Thanks, Emily. Good to see you. <laughs> hey, Lemieux. Oh, D'Anjou. Okay. There it is. But Lemieux was close. It was a ju, like zhuzh. Could you zhuzh up your anjou? Little red onion goes a long way. You're not even gonna. You're not even gonna comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> a little red onion goes a long way. And oh, let's not forget our pomegranate or butternut squash. And um, is it still hot? It's a little hot. Okay. Yeah, it's a little hot. Um, Suzanne says Bartlett. Bartlett. You can use any kind of these pears that are that are going to hold up. Yeah, it's cool enough. Uh, can Deb, can you make your butternut squash the day before? Absolutely. And I did get this from Carlsbad Caverns, and that is on my uh, ingredient list there. And they, I love their, their way that they blog recipes because it's very down to earth. They're like me, they talk like me. So she gives you a whole list of suggestions that you can do the day before if you would like. Pretty? You know what this smells like? This smells like when I, um, when I, not saute, when I put the apples in the butter and the cinnamon in the, uh, the iron skillet. Mm -hmm. This really smells so yeah. good, you guys. Now we're going to add the pomegranates. This is a... Where'd my recipe go? Oh. Did you cover it up? Yeah. So we have one pear, one apple, one fourth cup of red onion. I don't think I was able to tell you that. And then I have a half a cup of fresh pomegranate seeds. You can find pomegranate seeds all ready to go at the store as well. Oh, Travis, look how pretty that looks yeah, already. Yeah, show the people. We're going to show We're going to show you guys this. Can you guys imagine how these, this butternut squash tastes. And this is coming from someone who had zero interest in eating this to begin with, but now yeah. I can't wait, especially and with that cheese. It's just so beautiful. And the thing about Thanksgiving is there's a lot of heavy carbs served at Thanksgiving. The only thing acidic, and if you watched us last Sunday, we made a cranberry sauce. The only thing acidic on the table is the cranberry sauce. So this adds another layer to your I'm just going to snap a photo. But I'm not done yet. That's okay. We'll okay. do it in steps. I don't care. <laughs> it is pretty, isn't it? I saw it? it on the TV over there. We've got it streaming over there. 
and I saw it up there. I was like, oh my God, I can't wait to eat that. It calls for four ounces of gorgonzola cheese. This is five ounces. I'm going to just leave a little bit in the tin here in the little thing. What are we going to do with a whole ounce of gorgonzola cheese? I say cheese? put it in. No, we don't want to overpower it. I don't mind. We don't want to overpower, especially a salad. So we'll just leave that much there. We'll find a reason for, uh, to use it. Now, pumpkin seeds. These are the fresh roasted. I roasted them with olive oil and sea salt. How's that look? Huh? Mm. Okay. I'm and the I'm last... Me. What? I said, I'm glad I'm me. Like my sister says, why are you so cute, Travis? Why are you so cute? And then the last step is going to be the caramelized. I thought you were going to put that whole jar in there. No, no, no. That's going to be a sweet no. salad. Like I said, I, I really want to do a show, Travis, of like caramelized onions, caramelized nuts, um, just things to have in your refrigerator. I mean, mm -hmm. how cool would it be to like hamburgers for dinner? Throw on some caramelized onions and there you go. Tastes like uh, White Castle. There you go. I should have, you know what I should have done? Mm. Mm. I should have had the pomegranate on top. On top. Yes, that's okay. Wait, show, show. Now let's show everyone what that looks like. Okay. It's right here. So it's apple, pear, pomegranate, um, mm. gorgonzola cheese. The butternut squash is just beautiful. So um, there we go. And get our dressing now. Apple, out. pear. We've got our dressing to put on here. And still. because it's been in the oven with the cinnamon and the, uh, oh, look at it on that screen over there. Oh, it's it looks pretty. so beautiful. Hey, I tightened that. You sure did. I, Where I is the recipe? The it. recipe is on um, Audrey. If you look at our, in, um, Instagram, our Instagram and Facebook. and Facebook, all the ingredients are right there. And... Um, it for the dressing no do we include the dressing i don't know if i included the dressing but i will let I you know remember. pinterest it's carlsbad caverns is who i got the recipe from i changed it up a little bit to meet my family's needs now so, if you if you've got a family member that doesn't care for vinaigrette i actually like this this dressing but could you um could you put part of it on there and then Oh, let is there them another is there another oh. dressing that might go with the salad? Yeah, if you were here for the top of the show. No, it's just the salad and the roasted squash. Okay, Audrey, recipe. I'll get did you Audrey, let me know if you want the recipe for the dressing and I'll get it to you. Otherwise, any bottled uh dressing will work. I didn't mean to be rude, but No. But I did say I did say Is that why you were singing all the single ladies upstairs? <laughs> <laughs> it is. So Cuz she knew I wasn't going to be listening during the show. Oh, you're so silly. Okay, maybe a little more dressing on here. Sure. And stop. You don't mm. want to load it down. Now, give me. Oh, let me get a plate for you, Trav. Yeah. I'm gonna get Ooh, this for you. Done. Sorry. Make sure you get some of that gorgonzola, cause I don't think I've ever had gorgonzola cheese. Okay. But I mentioned brie cheese, and for those of you. Like my dad, because dad, I know you don't really, you're not very adventurous with your cheeses. Brie cheese is amazing on just little French roll baguette. You could put that there with some salami and some uh, chopped up pears or fruit. Eat that as a light lunch. Brie cheese is really, really delicious. It's got a distinct flavor. Gorgonzola tastes like that to me, but it also kind of has that blue cheese sort of flavor on it too. Oh, yeah. With that vinaigrette, that looks really tasty. There you go. Have a taste, okay. my friend. Well, let me get a taste of this. First of all, let's let's do this. Travis tries his, tries his. I see what you're saying about the... Um, this because I'm going to go with the butternut squash because yeah. I did a Travis tries it. Oh, oh Travis tries it. Yeah, it's not... I mean, it's not... Your favorite. It's not my favorite. It kind of, the way it's cooked though, kind of tastes like a bland apple. <laughs> right? right? I will taste it because I do like butternut squash. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to get some of that cheese. I think you're right I'm about, I think you're right about maybe dressing the salad as you go because that way your, um, 
your salad tastes, you know, crisp and it looks beautiful. And then you can even put the salad back in the fridge. And if you dress it, sometimes it gets wilty. So let me give it a try here. I could see. Okay, feeling. let me see what Audrey said here. I can make the dressing. I can make the dressing too. Thanks. Have a lot of flavor. Yeah, just anything you would use on any kind of salad that features fruit, Audrey. There's a lot of flavors going on in this. Um, I could see feeling filled up after this salad. Mm -hmm. If you've been watching mm -hmm. the show for very long, anytime we've had a salad, that's a big thing for me is I want it to feel hearty. And this, this salad, because of the nuts, because of the cheese and the fruit and the squash in there, mm -hmm. and this vinaigrette with the Dijon and all those other spices, all that mixing together, this is a really fantastic, very, very... Um, I love that butternut. Very good salad that all the flavors are playing nicely together. Yeah. Pomegranate is a nice little pop in there too every yeah. now and then. Yeah. That's why I didn't want to add too much of anything. I wanted to stay with that recipe. Um, what's the matter? The only thing I would change, and this is just me, I don't care for raw onions. Oh, you don't. Yeah. Yeah. So I just got an onion and that's why I grimaced. That's not just a McDonald's character. I, I grimaced. That's oh, really good. It's really good. Mm -hmm. But everything else, oh, this cheese is really good. Why mm -hmm. haven't you told me about this cheese before? Mmm. With a pear. Let me try it with a pear. <laughs> it's yeah. so much fun to cook for him. That's good. My dad <laughs> says, I have cheese whiz and American cheese, too. You're stepping it up a there notch, There you Dad. go. There you go, yeah. and Lemieux, it is delicious. It tastes delicious. And yeah, the presentation is really pretty. And I would, uh, you know, and again, in building the salad, I would wait and put the pomegranate and the the um, the pumpkin seeds on last to kind of make sure that they get a little showpiece because the pomegranate just catches the light real pretty. So it is, what are you getting? Cheese. Oh my God! The doctor said your cholesterol. The doctor didn't even say anything about cheese. I <laughs> cholesterol. Cheese, but cheese. <laughs> I'll walk an extra mile later. Okay. You're gonna be like those guys on SNL. My heart, uh, my heart. Uh. Oh. So. Lay off me! I'm starving. This is, uh, this is what's going to be on our table, not just tonight, but for Thanksgiving as well. If you're vegetarian, this is ready to go. If you're a vegan, make your caramelized nuts like Anna Maria and sa suggested with the Smart Balance. And Diana said uh, coconut oil. Um, and what else? And of course the cheese. You would have to leave the cheese off. Otherwise, this is a perfect dish for a vegetarian. A few little tweaks and it's great for a vegan. And it really is just a pretty light option on your Thanksgiving table um, this year. You know, you have more of this and less mashies. That's how you gotta do it. For, that's how I gotta do it. There's still an ounce of cheese in the container. That's right, Fabian. I'll eat that later. <laughs> With a spoon. <laughs> Fabian will be our guest on Tuesday with his husband, Scott, and they'll be talking about how they uh, moved to, to Florida from Las Vegas and um, how they're doing Thanksgiving differently. I mean, they are just the most amazing hosts and know how to throw a party. So I'm really curious to see what kind of things they're going to do for Thanksgiving. And Suzanne and Jack have a large extended family. So I'm curious to see as well, how are they going to incorporate some Thanksgiving traditions and what we're going to do new for Thanksgiving. We're only going to go through this once. I promise you, we're only going to do this once, you guys, with COVID. This will be our only Thanksgiving with COVID because everybody is going to get on the same page. I know they are. Since we only have to do it once, do something different for Thanksgiving. Make it your own. Take your power back and make Thanksgiving your own. Don't sit there and go, oh, I wish I could do this or I wish we could do that, you know? No. Make it your own. Take back your power and create something special and different. And when you tell that story to your grandkids, it's like, I remember Thanksgiving in 2020. We dropped off food to all our friends. Yeah, drive-by. <laughs> drive-by, drive-by Thanksgiving. So um, thank you again, everybody, for, for joining us. Um, 
Thank you for you sharing this video. We love you so much. I was so excited to see everybody. Come back at Tuesday at 7 p.m. Tuesday at 7. We'll see everybody. Cooking with Debbie and friends. And cheese. Cooking with Debbie and friends. And cheese. And cheese. Now hand me that cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Give us.